Do this. Second one. Done? Somebody just created PPT and gave it to me. All of you tried. So electric field is given to I cap plus 3 J cap. So how the electric field is? Suppose this is your X. Huh. So 2 I cap plus 3 J cap. So how the field will be? Like this? No, it will be Like that? Why? Slopes negative. No, no, slopes. Slope is positive. Slope is positive. Slope is positive, no? Yes. So, this is how the field will be. Yes or no? And how this line is, y is equal to minus 2 by 3 x plus 5 by 3. So this equation of this line is that, so it has negative slope. So is it perpendicular to this? Is this 90 degree? If it is 90 degree, you are moving in the direction that is 90 degree to the field. 90 degree to the field, okay? And we know that E dot dr is equal to change in potential. So if E dot dr is zero, change in potential is zero and hence change in potential energy is also zero. So if you move along these lines, your potential energy won't change. So if potential energy doesn't change, then work done by you is zero. You are not doing any work because energy is not changing. Understood? Is clear? These are called equipotential surface. You will learn more about it in class 12th, electrostatics. First one, you don't want to do the first one. You want to know the answer? Minus 20 I cap plus J cap. So, when you integrate that, you get the field, right? So, you get 2x plus 3y. Which one integrate? E dr. Like E dx and E dot dr. Yes. Take a dot product and then integrate. Yeah, so, so I'll get 2x plus 2x i cap plus... Dot product is zero because theta is 90 degree. Cos theta is 90. No, so I'm just saying if I, if I want the field, uh, like, no, if, if I want the potential at any x, okay. then I can say that that's 2x i cap plus 3y j cap. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So they've given field. You want to know the potential, how much yes, it is? So 3x i cap plus... No, 2x i cap plus 3 y j cap, right? So e dot dr, you have to integrate from the point which is known to you. You need, you need to know potential at a point which could be infinity also. Okay. okay. So from that point e dot dr, you have to integrate r1 to r2 like the way we have done the previous one. Okay. So v1 minus v2 you will get always. You will not be able to get what is v1 and what is v2 because your limits can't be infinity to something. When you integrate, you get change in potential. Do this. It's a simple, eh, not this. First one, fada fada karo. This is from NCRT, I guess. 18,000 feet is how many meters? That many. No, no, that is a lot more than that. It's about 5.4 kilometers. 5,000 meters? So I have climbed 18,000 feet. It's about 2.56. Yeah, 2.56. For the first one? No. Six point point. Two it's two R. No, it's R. It's R only, right? Yeah, it's R. It's R. G effective at a height is G naught. This. 
So if this has to become G naught by 2, so H will be what? Something root and all will come. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is root 2. Why? H is root 2 minus 1. H is root 2 minus 1. Which is roughly 0.5 times R. 0.4. Yes, these are all simple questions. We move ahead. Okay. Okay? But then this also is simple, I guess. This one. Try this second one. Do the second one. Tell me the exact answer. Exact. Exact. Vegas be some weird number. Yes. She'll go to the exact zero. Whoever gets the right answer gets a break. Earn your break. 9.7 kg? No, no, no. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 7, 8 kg. So you done this properly. G factor will be how much? 9.7 kg. What is the formula for that? So, so you take the regular thing and you subtract the sense if you buy it. G is equal to G naught minus, minus omega square, 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 square. Minus omega square R e cos square cos lambda which will become 1. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. Omega is how much? Pi by, by, by 12. 26 or something. 24, 60, 60. Huh? Radius of Earth. 6,000 this much meters. Have you done all this calculation? Huh? <laughs> Calculate karo. The answer is 0.997. This will give you effective G. So the weight will be M into G and the mass is M into G divided by G naught. So 1 minus omega square R E by G naught. This is the mass because M is 1 kg, right? Okay. Alright, so please attempt these questions. We we'll start from question number one. Sir, we've done the second one. Ah, second one, name. First one. Sorry. So we've done something very similar to the first one. You've done at what height below? Ah, take it. Take all of it, answer. You should find it quickly then. The first one. First, first. What is the first one? Any of you got the answer already? Yeah. How much? Okay. Let me check. What is the value? So your omega square. Oh. One oh. Number. Should I do it? You're not able to do it. You're not able to do it. How much exact answer? 0 0.0015 into the radius of Earth. How much is that? Should I do it now? I Here G effective is how much? This is equ equator. Here G effective is G naught minus <coughs> omega square oh. Re. This is a G effective here. 
So basically, I need to find out at what height over here g effective becomes equal to that. Yes or no? Okay, so this is let's say h. So basically, g naught divided by 1 plus h by re the whole square, you have to find out where it will become equal to g naught minus omega square re. This equation all of you got? All of you got this equation. Now, assuming that omega is very small, so this, this effect of rotation is very less, which is a reasonable assumption, we can assume h is very less compared to radius. So, I can write this down as g naught 1 minus 2h by re, like that. And then you can further simplify it, g naught, g naught will be gone. So, omega square re will be equal to g naught 2g naught h by re. So, h will come out to be omega square re square divided by 2g naught, which is roughly 10 kilometers. All of you understood this? Okay. So, whatever, see, the thing is that if you are at equator, the effective g there is 10 kilometer above the North Pole. That is what it means. Okay. There are two questions. <clears throat> Solve both of them. Calculations is the, calculations are there, but try to get it yourself. I think simple. The first one is simple. Kepler's law. R1. T square is proportional to R cube. T1 square by T2 square is R1 cube by R2 cube. R1 and R2 are their distances. <laughs> Ratio of average distance between Mars and the Sun to the between the Earth and the Sun. So R2 by R1 is equal to T2 by T1 2 by 3 So T2 is how much? T2 is 1.88 years so 1.88 raised to power 2 by 3 this is what? Roughly how much it is? 1.52 Can you do the second one? This is from NCRT, similar to NCRT. Why is the answer? Hai? Yes, 6 into 10 to 24. So, time period of moon is given. Okay? So, how do you relate it to the mass of the earth? Oh, using direct expression? Yeah. So you can just use the mv square by r. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so mv square by r is equal to g m1 m2. So suppose this is moon and this is earth. This distance is given. Orbital radius is given. So mv square by r where small m is the mass of the moon is equal to g. Capital M is mass of the earth divided by r square. So from here you get a velocity to be equal to root over g m by r and then 2 pi r divided by v is the time period of revolution for the moon. From there you get the mass of the earth. Just by knowing the time period revolution of moon you can get the mass of the earth. So you don't directly calculate the mass of the earth or distance of earth from the moon. So these are the indirect ways to find out the mass of earth or mass of moon like that. Okay. By the way, these are all the questions of H.C. Verma. We are almost done with all the questions. Just a couple of more. You should the first one or second? First one is same? Yeah. Okay, don't do the first one. Do the second one. So you need the answer in terms of G Everything is given. The radius. Uh, so radius of what? The other code, okay? 6400 kilometers. This is also direct formula. So you should get the correct answer. 
there a problem with the How much? The velocity is spread to be in 4,000. Sir, approximately 2.5 feet. Sir, just use key. Second question. No, the second question. Second question. Yeah, of course. The first part, what is the answer? Uh -huh. 6.9 kilometers per second. Part A is... Can't you solve this? mv square by r is equal to gm1 m2 by r square. Same thing you have to do again and again. V will come out to be root over 2 gm by r. <coughs> 2000 kilometer above the earth's surface. So r is what? Small r is 2000 plus 6400. Okay. You have to substitute here to get the value of velocity. Then kinetic energy, once you get velocity, <coughs> Kinetic energy simply you can find out like this. Right? 2.38. 10 is for 10. This is the kinetic energy. C part is potential energy. It will be minus of minus of two times of kinetic energy so minus of mv square is the answer d part time period of revolution you know the direct formula right you can do it like this also 2 pi r by v okay three notes three notes